BMX for me started with my brother Kai. He was three years old. He's three years older than me and he absolutely loved riding his bike. I can't say that I loved it at the start because I, I, I hear stories where on my first race, I crashed three times on the same jump, cried, went home, didn't touch my bike for two months. I think what kept me into the sport was when I just, I started winning. She likes a cocky bar had the start of her life. Let's see if it could be the race of her life. I loved being the first person to cross the finish line and um, I loved getting the trophies at the end and standing at the top of the podium. I was born on the Gold Coast when I was two years old. Um, my mum and my dad's uh, visas ran out, so we had to leave the country. Um, so we went to Japan and I, was, I just started being a typical Japanese girl. Like I, I went to preschool and then I started uh, primary school there as well. Like my first language was Japanese. When I was turning eight, we moved back to Australia living in Sydney this time. Every time I go to Japan, I say I, I'm going back to Japan as if it's like my second home. Um, I still carry those cultural things um, in my day-to-day -day life, like taking my shoes off before I go inside or saying itadakimasu before I eat and gotsudo sama after, after I eat. I think for anyone, being an Olympian is such a huge achievement and it's so special in itself but for my first Olympics to be in a place like Tokyo where I grew up where I started my BMX journey um, and to come back there after all these years to race the pinnacle event of BMX in a place like that it just makes it ten times more special and now it's only a couple months away I think growing up, there was not really that much kind of competitiveness between myself and my brother Kai. He was the inspiration for me to come into the sport. He was the one who helped me push myself into start training and up until the point where we started, you know, we both turned professional. We were circling circling the World Cup circuit and we just made a really really good team like on the road traveling as well when he's that intense and uh, everything has to be perfect type personality and I was more laid back so we kind of evened each other out. So in February 2020 we were racing a World Cup in Bathurst. The weather was really really bad um, wind, there was high winds and we were racing a different course to what we're, what we're used to and yeah unfortunately Kai had a really really big stack in the first race. He hit his head really badly that he was intubated on site like he stopped breathing and um, he was airlifted to Canberra Hospital and, like straight away and the first few days we really didn't know if he was gonna make it because he was so heavily sedated seeing him in the hospital bed it really didn't even he didn't even look human like he was insane like his hair was all um, shaved off and his face was all you know shaped funny and even the doctors didn't really know what was going to happen to him um, if he was going to be able to wake up or even even if he does like how how much is he going to be able to get back and yeah I actually really did think that yeah I was going to lose him and it was going to be, yeah, just, just me for the rest of my life. Um, it was definitely really scary. Each week, Kai just kept getting a little bit better, a little bit better, opened his eyes, moved his hand, and then we just started to see a lot of positive in each day, even though it was so hard to see him in that state after, you know, he was a fit, healthy, energetic, you know, guy and now a year and a half later, he's walking, he's talking, he's doing speeches in front of a crowd. Now even back on the bike and he's loving being back on the bike. Oh, I even got the leg out. Yay! Yay. 
Oh, that's so good. <laughs> nice work. I'm really proud of everything he's achieved and I, I think he's just gonna, there's just no sign of stopping for him and yeah, it's so awesome to see. Ever since Tokyo was in within Kainai's radar, it was just the dream to represent Australia as brother and sister. And that was the driving force between the both of us in every training session, every, every race we went to and everything leading up to that moment. And when that, all of that was taken away, it definitely has taken a while to adjust. And I feel like I still am adjusting. It's definitely been a big process for me to really accept. Um, and then, but within that time, I was able to, I guess, find my own motivation to get myself there and focus on that rather than dwelling on the fact that I've lost something. So at that time, he called me to tell me going, go, going to the Olympics. I, was, I can't believe how legendary it was. Last year was a really tough year for me for you and everyone else in the family that was affected by my injury. Saya, we've always supported each other and now it's my turn to support you. So good luck and all the best in Tokyo. He's part of that, my journey. It does give me more inspiration just to, you know, get myself there, but just do my best when I'm, when I'm in the Olympics and um, I'm there to represent myself, Australia and Kai and my family, the whole support team that I've had this whole time. And I just want to go out there and do my best. Oh, so